Hello and welcome to another edition of Featured Business brought to you by your host, James Moffat, myself, and Visibility Impact. And we have our 76th guest today, right? Cornelia Illy. Illy? Illy, yeah. yes. Yeah. Otherwise known as Connie. So we'll stick to your short name. So Connie is our 76th guest. So congratulations and welcome. This is your first time, so you've not been a guest and you've not been in the audience, so you have no idea what's in store for you today. No, I have seen some videos that you made, but not quite, so <laughs> I have to catch up. Right, and at the moment, uh, it's, it's quite cosy, there's four of us. Emily is travelling, but she is going to do recording for us, so we'll have a song at some point through here, so we'll have a break in between if she gets the recording done in time. If not, we'll share that afterwards or stitch it into the recording of this at the end. So we want to know a little bit about you. So we'll go straight into that. So the, the way this is done, just to, as a bit of a recap for, for the audience listening, we don't talk about your business and everything at the moment or what mm -hmm. you're doing. We take you on a little, little journey back through your childhood up to where okay. you are now. So we learn a bit more about who you are, is Connie, right? And then, as I said, because there's a small group, we can make it interactive. So if people want to jump in and ask a question, or if any time you want to ask the audience a question, then please do so. So, all clear? All clear, yes. So without further ado, right, the spotlight is on Connie. So let's just take you back through memory lane and tell us a little bit first, well, where are you currently and where are you originally from? Where well, I live in Madrid 10 years now, but I'm from Romania, Bucharest, uh, the capital of Romania. So I come from a poor family, myself and one brother I have. Um, what else? I studied uh, English philology, so for my, I should be English teacher, but I don't like working with kids, so I yeah. stick to other um, ways to use English in, <laughs> in my work, and um, how I... <clears throat> and let's out. just kind of pause there, because you, you've gone way too fast forward. Okay. So, right. But I, I'm, I'm curious about yeah, you, you don't like working with kids. I uh, know. No, when I was in uh, university, we had to make the practice on working with kids. And I went to classes and I noticed that they are way too distractive and they don't pay attention to the teacher. So I said, that's not for me. <laughs> I, they don't I can't... respect me. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I'm thinking how... Um, Although I like uh, English language and I like kids, but when they are too many, <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> so I said, I can't do this because, um, from that point of view. Uh, but, but, but is there a limit? If there's a small group of kids, you could do it? Uh, I think so. I, I had some, <clears throat> some time when I was uh, giving English classes for small kids and I've done it with two or three kids. So. In small group, yes, but in large oh. group, it, it's different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's more, you get more attention and it's more personal in a smaller group. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's depend, it depends also on the person who needs to do it, because if you have a strong personality, you can impose to them and they should, <laughs> they should listen to you. But if you're blander, <laughs> It's it's more difficult. But I think, honestly, I think there's an art to interacting with, with anyone because if they if you were in front of a group of adults mm -hmm. and it was more than, I don't know, five people, so there's a big audience, would you have the same challenge? Mm, yes, but I think the adult people tend to pay attention who, who is in front. Hello? I, I, not, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 have I think it depends on the yeah. person. I mean, we could, we could. Teaching adults and they behave exactly like kids. I mean, we, we could really digress on this, but I mean, I don't want to do it because I, I, 
I worked at a school uh, mm -hmm. last week and my first, I had five different classes and the first class had 23 kids. I'd mm -hmm. never, it was my first time I'd met them and it was all about storytelling. Uh, I, I don't want to kind of hijack this show talking about that, but I mean, uh, I got their attention all 23 and then the, the next class was around 12 and then 12 and then the last one uh, at the end of the day was five. So, but it worked with 99%, only one child didn't interact. So, mm -hmm. so I think it's, sometimes it can be easier with kids, depends on how you engage with them know. at the beginning. If I go to a class or a presentation or whatever, I pay attention. But I think there are people who don't pay attention, no matter uh, the subject. Or <laughs> yeah, but do, do you not think it's it's more, I mean, I, would, I, I know we're really digressing here, which we, we'll come back on track in a minute. But I remember being at school uh, and I had the, the perfect subject. I couldn't wait for that subject because that was really my thing. But the teacher delivering it, was the most boring teacher ever. And then I thought, oh no, this could be so exciting. And then I've had the opposite, the really exciting, engaging teacher and the most boring subject. But it, it definitely helped because the subject wasn't so boring because of the teacher. Mm -hmm. So I think it is the art of delivering whatever you're doing. It is, but I think it depends also on the personality you have because no matter how many things you know or how prepared you are, if you're not meant to do that, you will do it. And well, then maybe if you're doing it with business people, you say that if they start to use their phone and are not paying attention, you, you have to like call them out. You say, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you don't no, feel- Sometimes uh, you, you should, you should. I mean, put them on the spot because it, it's not good for you when when an audience aren't taking any notice, like Paul, you see. Let me see, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but anyway, yeah. I mean, I don't care calling people out. And then it's not to embarrass them, but it's also to, if there's something that, if they shouldn't be there, then don't be there. But anyway, we... Let's get back on track. So Emily's actually sent the recording there, so we'll play that in a minute. Uh, okay. th th let's go back. So you're in Madrid at the moment. Mm -hmm. So how long? Yes, I'm in Madrid, uh, but uh, now you are the one who went <laughs> fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm going backwards. I'm starting. Uh, so you're in Madrid at the moment. Okay. Uh, how, how, uh, how long? How long have you lived there? I live since 211. So. 10, 211. 12 years, so, since 211. Yes. <laughs> 2000. Uh, uh, okay. 2000 you sorry. don't look so old. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Don't look that old, right? <laughs> no. Right. Um, right. Now I'm going to take you back. So you're originally from Romania, mm -hmm. from Bucharest. Bucharest, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Who's, everyone been? Anyone been to Bucharest here? No. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have. Paul? Uh, I've, I've met people. I know a lot of Romanians, but I've never been to, to Romania itself. Oh, it's beautiful. I've been yeah. three times last year. I really enjoyed some of the people I've met. I met them in Sweden, I think. We were at uh, sort of like a common meeting event. And uh, I met some lovely people from Romania. I always wanted to go there. She always wanted me to bring her diamonds from Africa. But uh, yeah, that's as far as it went. Yeah, I, I've been many times. I think the, the first time I went was 1989 and we went through the Transylvanian mountains yeah. and saw Dracula. Did uh, you see Dracula? I was going to say, yeah. yeah. I. I think you saw Dracula Castle, not Dracula Castle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we saw Dracula Castle, but we went, you know, that was the first time I went, but I went many years later and it's completely different. But anyway, so you're not our first guest from Romania. We've had a few. Mm -hmm. So you should catch up with each other. So I, I put you in now the, the featured business group. So yeah, you could 
catch up and have yes, a look. Now I'll catch up after this. Yeah. So, so growing up as a kid, you've got siblings. Uh, I have one brother who's three years older than me, and I think that. And and he's in Romania. He's in Romania. Yes. All right. So, what? Okay. So, what made you? No, no, I'll come to that in a minute. I don't, don't want to say What that. made me change Travel. the country? Yeah. That no, was no. the question. No, no, but I mean, we'll come to that in a minute. So bef before we go there, as a child growing up, did you have any particular ambitions or hobbies or interests that you wanted um, to do? No, uh, I, I had um, some, I don't know how to call it. Um, I... Had, uh, I have a um, very poor um, family. So what I was doing is uh, trying to reach out. So watching movies and uh, reading books was my spare time. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. because I had the, the, that feeling that when you um, see a movie or when you read a book, you, uh, you live some other people's life, no? You live the, the life that you you read or you see, you know? So yeah. it's um, it's a strange feeling, but it, 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 no, I felt I, it that way. No, I think I can relate to that. So, I mean, reading books and also watching movies and things, mm -hmm. you can, for that moment in time, you feel that you're actually part of it. Yes. And it's not until it's kind of finished that you realize you're not part of it but how can you change your life to to be like something that you mm, want something no, different but that helped me because that was how i learned uh, spanish that was how i learned english and that is why i'm doing that is why i can write what i'm writing right now because of the all the books i've read when i was a child so, so it's all related so when it started, I mean, because did you did you learn English at school or did you teach yes, yourself? I learned English at school since I was six or so. And okay. the we started English in the second grade. And later on, I studied English philology. So it's related. And then Spanish, I learned by watching telenovelas, <laughs> which are the Spanish movies. And the thing is that when you hear a language for a long time or for a long period of time, you, your brain associates the, and it has to be uh, with the translation. Yeah, subtitles. subtitles yeah. Yes, with the subtitles. Um, and um, later on, when you hear the same word, you just know what it means. Well, maybe so for when some. I came here in Spain, I I knew how to speak Spanish um, because I've heard it for a long time, although I've never spoken before. Yeah, I mean, some people are gifted in that respect. It's like yes. my neighbor, uh, they had a five-year-old, or at the time, five-year-old daughter. I mean, she's <laughs> 10 now, I think. But she didn't speak a word of English. But from watching uh, movies and kids' things in English, and speaking with me, she learned English, mm -hmm. and she, but she hadn't started that at school yet. She's, I don't know if even she started now, but I mean, yeah, it's quite amazing. So, mm -hmm. but I think it's not for everybody because I No, in... but it also depends on your family, let's say, because uh, here I've met people that, for example, uh, one of the fathers is of a nationality, the other one is other nationality, so the child needs to speak both languages. Um, if, yeah. um, for example, the mother is Romanian and the father is, I don't know, Turkish, he needs yeah. to speak both. It, it, and, he, and if he lives here in Madrid, he has to speak Spanish as well. So we already have three languages. Uh, so, so, from the, but... <laughs> No, I, I understand because my wife is Brazilian and we live in Switzerland. So the kids speak Brazilian Portuguese, English and Swiss German. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're learning, I mean, they learn high German at school as well. And they're learning French now. So for, for them, I mean, already trilingual. For me, I, I still struggle. 
actually, I think my language is going backwards because not living in a native English speaking country anymore, I feel that my English is, is suffering because of that. So I'm actually going backwards with my language. So right. when, I, when I actually go back to the UK, I, I have no idea what people are talking about anymore because they, their language evolves as well. And because I'm not part of it, they're saying words I've never heard of. So, so anyway, but we, they, let's stay focused on you. So, so you said that you're married with a, a child. Uh, yes, so after the university, I got married and I, I've started working in multinational companies because I was um, speaking English. So I used English to get a job and I've worked there in Romania in some, I don't know, two or three multinational companies. And later on, the crisis came. So, so in what, what kind of position, I mean, roles were you doing uh, in these companies? Assistant manager, secretary, these sort of things. Okay. You know, answering the phone, translating documents, mm, okay. sm small job, let's say. You know? <laughs> uh, and um later on i got fired and my husband was also uh without a job so we thought you know we uh, we have heard of people coming here in spain and that were better so we said why not <laughs> uh, we don't have nothing else to lose since we don't have a job so we packed what we had um and uh, we made a trip in car from Romania, um, I don't know, Ukraine, um, Austria, France, uh, Italy, France, and Spain. Wow. So it was a long trip, <laughs> but, but, but we didn't have, uh, it was in summer, so it was hot and nice and yeah. so forth. And we didn't have, um, uh, special day we needed to to arrive so there was no rush and it was interesting hi good morning pete hi pete hey everyone hi right, we, we just pause, pause very briefly pete is a regular as well and yeah he's i i guess you're in atlanta i'm in atlanta my morning, Friday morning's men's session just ended a little later than normal. So sorry, I'm a little late joining, but glad to be here. No problem. Thank you. Is that a, is that a beard that I see? Is that a beard going there? <laughs> That's just called lazy. Being lazy. <laughs> okay. But if you like, maybe I'll keep it. Yeah, I think, it, I think it'll suit you. You've got that sort of professor look about you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, we, we just kind of kicked off. It is, it's a bit of a smaller group, so we're making it as interactive as possible. So Connie is just telling us about, she's originally from Romania, uh, born in Bucharest, uh, did a road trip around Europe and ended up in, is that how you ended up in Spain? No, we, we headed Spain when we lived in Romania. All right. Because so, we... So why, why Spain? Why Spain? Because, um, because I, I knew that I, uh, I knew how to speak Spanish and because we knew some Romanians that were here in Spain. So we're not, is, it wasn't just uh, we are leaving the country. Uh, it was also we are going somewhere we, we can know somebody because <laughs> if you're going out there, um, it's very difficult to change uh, the country without having a contract, without having a job, without having anyone. No, so at least to be someone you can uh, you can know or you can rely on if you're in trouble. I don't know, <laughs> something yeah. like that. So, so when people see you in Spain, in in Madrid, right? Do they think you're Spanish? Uh, it depends. There are people that say that don't make the difference if I'm Spanish or not. And there are some who say that for my accent, it, they can notice I'm not Spanish. Right. 
But do they know where you're from? Is it obvious or not? No, not really. Right. Uh, it depends on the person you met because some say uh, it, it is easier for them to guess your nationality and others say, I don't know, tell me, <laughs> what are you? Yeah, exactly. So your husband, is he Romanian then? Yes, he's Romanian and he's, um, he's been working in telecommunications and later on in uh, repairing uh, computers. So when we got here in Spain, after one year or so, we've opened a repair office. Mm -hmm. It's not like, I don't know, it's a small, uh, it's not a shop, it's a repair, um, I don't know how it's called. <laughs> He's repairing computers, let's say. All right, okay. Uh, okay. And uh, so how long have you lived there? You said since 2011? Yes. Right, so your, and, daughter, your daughter was... Uh, was she, she came one year after we got here in Spain. So she was born in Spain? Yes. Did, did she, that, automatically give her a, a Spanish nationality? Uh, no. Um, although she's considered Spanish, uh, she needs to make the papers to be recognized as a Spanish because if she's a, a Romanian's daughter, it's not like she's Spanish. Uh, uh, okay, but she can apply. 100%. She, she can, can you apply after a certain amount of time as well? What? Can you apply to be Spanish as well? Yes. <laughs> After how long? Uh, I think uh, five years or so. All right. Okay. But you're, you haven't... Uh, but the thing is that mm, the Romanian um, authorities are a bit mm, bad because they, they say, if you want to be a Spanish, you have to quit your Romanian nationality. And... <laughs> I, I don't, you don't think it's double? fair. You have double? Uh, no, I don't, but you you can't double. That's the thing. In Bulgaria, they allow it. To, so it's allowed to have double. Uh, yeah. seat, like, it like, should uh, be, but the yeah. Romanians don't want to. The Romanian authorities, I mean. Yeah, I mean, with, with our kids, I mean, they have a Brazilian nationality, a, a British nationality, uh, a Portuguese nationality, but they don't have the Swiss one, yet they were born here. Mm -hmm. But we can apply for that. Right. They so can we, become spies then, James, your kids. I think they're going to be spies, yeah. <laughs> yeah they are ready. Uh, I haven't applied uh, for this reason because it, it doesn't seem you, fair you, to me that you, you don't have wanna, to... All right, you don't want to be a spy. I don't want to be a spy. <laughs> no, I don't want to be a spy. <laughs> I, I have the name. I to can be a tell spy. you can be a spy without changing nationality. You can only be a spy if your name begins with James. And if you have 10 passports or so, no? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so sorry, how old is your daughter? So she's nine. Yes, she's nine. Right. Is, oh, she, is, she, yeah. is she going to come on and say hello? Uh, Sonia. 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 We, are, we, are, we are child friendly, you see. Hi. Hello. Hi, oh. Sonia. Uh, you you speak speak English? English? Well, English, we are in process. So, yeah. English or Spanish? I mean, Romanian. Romanian or Spanish? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, we always have kind of the kids appear every week as well. I mean, I, I end up like with my, my kids coming in here and disturbing me when I'm on, the, it, was, it was holidays last week and they, they came in and sat on the show as well. So we are child friendly here, you see. I think we're going to do a special for all the, the kids. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, so, so, so just... Yes. So just going back to you, so, I mean, for you in particular, you're the type of person you are, you like reading a lot. A any particular books? Um, not really. I, or, I don't know. I don't like the um, 
crimes and um, police and that sort of thing. But yeah, like I'm romance. not. I'm not. What romance? Is that romance. Your... Yeah. Rom yeah. Sort yeah. of. I don't know. <laughs> or uh, I know the yeah. Or science fiction. Or yeah. yes. I like more bio. One of my favorite is it's Dune. It's what? Dune, Dune. from Frank it's Herbert. Science fiction. Ah, okay. Dune. Dune, yes. Dune. <laughs> Paul, are you are you a reader, Paul? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Yeah. What what sort do you read then? Well, I like um, uh, John Grisham. And Lee Childs, you know Lee Childs. He writes, he writes that Jack Reacher. Oh yeah. Oh, Jack Reacher, and all. Yeah, I like him. He's, he's a good writer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always liked Grisham. And I like um, the guy. I forget his name now, but the guy who wrote. Um, uh, yeah. What was that movie that um, about the Italian church and all of that? Italian church. Harry Potter? No. The Da Vinci Code? Da Vinci Code. That's oh, it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Dan Brown. Who, who's the, who's oh, the wow. author? Don Dan Brown. Brown. Dan Brown, yeah. Dan like Brown. Dan Brown. Okay. I yeah, I've read all of those ones. This is stuff exceptionally well. Yeah. I, I like those because basically he's just telling the truth. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> you look at things in a different way. I don't know yeah, if it's yeah. the truth, but it's a different perception. So I, that's what I enjoy. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't, I, don't. I, I remember it was um, a dispute with one of his books uh, talking about Jesus or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was the Da Vinci Code. That was the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. The, the bloodline and the, the Knights that's Templar right. and everything that's else. Right. <laughs> Uh, but don't ask Pete because Pete will know everything. He's a movie yeah. expert. Yeah, Pete's a resident guru. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do they say? Uh, a broken clock strikes uh, the right time twice a day. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, we, we, we could make it a, a little pause if you want. I mean, we can make the show go on a bit longer because we started a bit late and we had some technical okay. issues. We could do a little pause here and have Emily sing. I've got the video. Okay. Here, right? That's good. Is that okay for everyone? Yeah. yeah. Into my hands, James. What can we say? Uh, I don't know if it'll work, but uh, let's let's give it a shot. This is the first, right? So if it doesn't work, then we'll just come back here. But if it does work, then then we've learned something new as well, right? So let me try some magic, right? Okay. So you should see Emily here. Yes, yeah. we right. do. Right. Let, let's see how we can do this to make it bigger. We are in the car on the way to a gig in Chambéry. Hello. Here's Mehdi, the guitarist. Hi. So we're going to do... Oh, wait there. Just make it
Don't worry. Did it stop? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was the end, I think. That's no, right. the car. Oh, yeah, that was the end. Yes, that was the end. No, no, no memory, no space. But it worked, it worked. So that it worked. Yes. You heard it okay? I yes. just imagine what happened there. She'd forgotten. She came to, to hear it. <laughs> All right. She found her. She said, oh, it sucks. I've still got to do something for yeah, I'll Friday send you, afternoon. Yeah, I'll send you a copy of that, right? So, I mean, to, I, I think she ran over someone. Did you hear a couple of thugs there when she was driving? Started uh, worrying. Yeah. Know, Mom. Maybe she ran over a couple of hedgehogs or something. <laughs> <laughs> Right, but anyway, it worked. I mean, to drive, have the guitarist and concentrate on not running over hedgehogs at the same time <laughs> was pretty good. So, so we've had Emily. So now back to Connie. Right, so Connie, people are dying to know what you're actually doing. So we know you're married, you're from Romania, you're in Madrid, you've got a nine year old daughter. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what was her name again? Sonia. Sonia. Sorry? Sonia. 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 Sonia, yes. Uh, okay. And and you work for corporate companies and stuff. And then there was a pivot point. Yes. Uh, the um, thing is that ever since I was in university, I wanted to work in something that I could do uh, from home and live from it. So but it took me you know, a lot of years and it has to uh the coronavirus had to arrive so we all get stuck in our homes and and we needed to do something to to live from so <clears throat> when the coronavirus came i made a marketing um mba and later on i decided to to jump as a freelance um, writing uh, content and copy and so so um, the the pivot point was this when when this there i think there's a good part and a bad part in all this because you need to um, to encounter some points when you have to make a decision so for me it was it was this one because uh if that didn't happen i think i will never uh i would have never decided to do what i'm doing now um, because we had this um business we have in family and we've tried to do another one but it failed, so it's different. Uh, it's difficult to to encounter that point when you you know that you're good at something, but to make the step, I'm I'm not uh, and to decide I'm not going to do anything else that can, will not be related to this. So, and I've made it two years ago or so. So. so, so. On, on your journey then, I mean, when you decided to do it, it was mainly because of COVID and everything and then wanting to work from home and to do something for yourself. So, but you wanted to learn, obviously, get some knowledge of that. So you did your MBA and everything. So, yeah. and then where did you first start finding your clients? I mean, who are your clients and where kind of, where did you start off finding them? and I because I always off. know, yeah, I always know with like entrepreneurs that their very first client is probably the, the most scary one, not in, in, the, in the way that they, they, they look scary, but I mean, because you're actually going to do something for someone that's going to pay for it. Yes, but um, the truth is, as uh, when I made my decision, I decided to make a LinkedIn post, which uh, was talking about can you help me uh, achieve my dream? And I was talking about, I always dream about working from my home, doing this and that. And people answer very well that post. And from that moment on, various uh, marketing agency uh, reach out to me, uh, wanted to know what I was doing and uh, how can I help and so forth. So from that moment on was my uh, start, you know? <laughs> 
but, my starting point. But I mean, I mean, you use some creativity in doing that because it's it's so difficult for a lot of businesses or solopreneurs to kind of start, and they don't know how to start. But mm -hmm. as you're using marketing and you're learning marketing skills as well. Was that something that you were taught within the, the marketing or was that your own idea? No, was that was my own idea. <laughs> I, I said, uh, I will try. If people doesn't respond to that, it's not my moment, but they responded. <laughs> but, but I mean, I admire kind of the courage to do something like that because a, a lot of people- How many people did you have on LinkedIn? How many people were you connected to at the time? Uh, I think like 500 or so. I don't know. Well, there was a, there was a few number of people, but uh, for um, some of them were already um, CEOs or of marketing agencies. So when they saw that, they knew. Let's <laughs> let's check this out. <laughs> so, how long ago was this then? Two years ago. Uh, yes. Right. So, um, I think it was, yes, um, the summer after coronavirus came. Right. So, in so you just out of curiosity, because I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile now, right, which I'm quite impressed with. I mean, did you get help putting your profile together, or did no. you do? No, it was well. I've uh, I've seen some videos or uh how does it call uh some uh posts that say you have to do this 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 mm -hmm, this this mm -hmm. and you have to check all that points mm -hmm. and uh, after that you uh, i came up with my own ideas how can i improve that in order to be better and better yeah. and and still i think um uh there's no end to that no because uh, every day you can uh, come up with something that can be better than you did the day before. Exactly. And also the, the algorithms and the way that LinkedIn works changes. So mm -hmm. some things that maybe have been there before are no longer there, but then they've introduced mm -hmm. something new. And the uh, algorithm that nobody understands. <laughs> exactly. So Pete is on the call here. Oh, he's just disappeared. Oh, he's back again. Uh, right. I'm, right. I'm, I, I just I'm, wanted to... I mean, yeah. everybody's introduced what they do, so maybe you can say what you do because there are some the connections here. Sure, sure. Well, it's it's great to be on the call this morning. I do brand strategy work and brand expansion and licensing, consulting mm -hmm. and and some marketing, but um, the the primary focus is around brand strategy and expansion and licensing and. Um, you know, I had the privilege of uh, working with James on improving my own LinkedIn profile. I thought was good, and then he told me how how ineffective it was being. So I up, upped it and improved it. And uh, you know, I, I think those things are really important. Um, you know, social media that's our that's an extension of our brand. So we we need to make sure it's consistent with our brand, tells a story, and does it in a way that. Uh, is is powerful so um i'm excited to hear more about uh yours and and what uh what led you to you know, kind of do the things that you did because clearly they worked and that's pretty special mm -hmm. yeah exactly so thanks pete for the plug uh, it, it wasn't really to to get the plug it was more to kind of see the correlation between what you're doing and, and marketing and also the, the, the fact that i mean as LinkedIn is a is a primary business tool, uh, it, it should be used accordingly because there's 800 plus million users on there, and yeah, all your clients what, and everyone will be there. So what what surprises me is that there are uh, a lot of people that are making a LinkedIn profile and never use it. Mm -hmm. after that mm -hmm. so they are using it like i'm going to put my cv here and wait for someone to to notice it <laughs> i don't know and yeah. and, and uh, linkedin is not yeah. working like that yeah uh, actually yeah it's true they, they think because they, they've gone through and they've built their profile and they've added their picture and everything else and now they're done you have to actively use it i mean it's like yeah creating a car and leaving it in the garage. It might yes. look beautiful in the garage, but you need people to see the car. Mm -hmm. Right. So I I mean I am impressed with your your LinkedIn profile and what you've done. So so tell 
about the, the types of clients that you look for now? What sizes well, are they? Uh, what in my, any industry sector? Yes, I. The ones I write for now are uh, travel companies and marketing agencies and also some universities. So education, it's also a good idea. Also for the fact that I am an English teacher. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's something related, no? Because it, there's something left for that teacher that it should have been. <laughs> so you, you do your, many of your, is your work mostly done because you're in Spain and you say that a lot of Spanish people don't necessarily, unless they're international companies and things, speak English. So is it mainly done in Spanish, your work? or in... No, it's in Spanish and in English. I have, you know, some of my clients are uh, marketing agencies here from Spain, but their clients uh, need their uh, content to be written in English. Okay. So, Mm, there's a two-point mm, language, let's say. Yeah. So you prefer kind of the smaller or the bigger clients? Mm, it depends. I had some not quite um, good experience with big clients in the sense that they don't have mm, that urge to do things right away and they are waiting for you to give them a solutions without them paying you. <laughs> and uh, in looking back to that, I think it's better for small clients. Yeah, so, so would you work with individuals? I mean, an individual business owner or more kind of the startup, kind of small businesses? Mm. No, individuals, not quite, because individuals, um, the same as the big companies, they they reach out to you, and then later in two or three weeks, you don't know anything about it. What if they are, uh, they have considered what you have told them or not? And so, you, so who who would be your ideal client then? I think um, small or medium companies. Right. And a particular industry sector? I mean, you mentioned travel, so would it be travels travel? Travels and education. And yeah. I also wrote for um, tech companies, like software companies or so. But tech, it's a huge mm -hmm. sector. So mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to go on parts of it, let's say. Right. So I, I guess we travel now because a lot of the restrictions are being lifted. Uh, travel obviously wants to start promoting and, and, and pushing what they're doing because yes, people yes. are more flexible in, in travel these days than over the last two years. So is that, can you see that as a growth area? Um, I think so because they mm, somehow notice that they need more uh, to do more in the, from the marketing point of view that they need people to know who they are, uh, even though two years ago, they didn't need it to do that. Okay, so so how is business? I mean, you, you've been doing this now for two years, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. And putting out that post on LinkedIn and, and get the marketing agency to come to you, are they still a client? Yes. Wow. And. So <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that's good, and then. besides that, there are other uh, companies or other people um, reaching out to me to ask for things or, I don't know, my services or yeah. whatsoever. So with, with, with that marketing one, I mean, it's a marketing agency. So, I mean, they provide marketing to their clients. Mm, no. I, I don't understand the question. Yeah, you, you said that the first one that came to you on LinkedIn was kind of a marketing agency, mm -hmm. right? So they provide marketing services to their clients. Yes, and they... Um, so you work with them directly for their business, but all you work with them for their clients? With the marketing agencies, I work, and they um, gave what I wrote to their clients, but I also have uh, direct clients. I have a travel agency from for which I work directly with. So okay. 
um, it, it depends on the on the people who reach out to me because they some say oh I need this for my client and others say I need this for my own business. So, so do you focus on because with marketing there's a lot to consider. So I mean you mentioned earlier it's about uh, the the copy and everything else and so not just the copy about it's about creating the posts the articles maybe blogs and the different types of social media linkedin mm -hmm. and then, then you've got tons of others depending on where they market their business so what do you cover in in what you do well uh what i um, there are some fields that i know something about and there are others that i'm good at um, what i realized lately is that um, there are some people who understand the difference and some that don't. I mean, when you need, for example, um, when you start a business and you need the web page and you need the content and you need the, to look for the CEO for the social media and so forth, uh, some uh, are thinking that all this can be done by one person. And it's not true because it's a huge work and you have to know a lot of things for the, I don't know, for the CEO part, for the content, for the social media, for, and some understand that it can be done by one person and some and others don't. So you have to make the selection to see uh, how can you help the people that is asking for help, but uh in in the same time that they understand what you what you want to tell them so i mean i can see that because marketing is kind of an umbrella and then underneath mm -hmm. that you get mm -hmm. you get people that specialize specialize in con in the copy mm -hmm. uh, to, to grab the attention and you get others that the more the images and videos and the, the algorithms and hashtagging and everything else on on the different social media and you, mm -hmm. you could be an expert in one social media platform but not necessarily another so it oh, all depends yes. on what they want and what you can offer so you package this when you sell it your services you sell it as a kind of a this is a package i do or mm, you're, you're no more... i normally listen to what he has to what he wants and depending on, or she, yeah. um, depending on what they say, I normally um, decide if I can do it myself or I need help. And that is when I um, work with uh, some other marketing agencies or some other people who can do the job that I can't. So, um, for example, for the keywords, I um, uh, normally look for someone who, who knows the platforms that you need to look for in order to find the keywords. Later on, I write the content or the copy. And later on, if they want the social media, there's another person who does it. Because there's um, an, um, the specific order they have to come up with. And um, it's um, difficult for people to understand it, it has to be done this way because um, they um, normally want something and they want uh, to see the results the day after. And it's, um, it, it doesn't work like that. And some understand and some don't. Yeah, I guess Pete knows all of that. Yes. Yeah, I was Hey, you don't find it happens the day after? <laughs> what? No. I'm oh, being no. <laughs> sarcastic about the fact that they always want it the day after, but it takes, I always say it's a marathon. You have to, you have to do this for years. It's, it's, it's going to take a long time, but, but it will work. And I have a client this morning I'm talking to in an hour and he's already seeing great results. People are really impressed with the difference in, the way he's projecting his brand and it's just really fun to see him be so happy about what has happened so uh -huh. it's uh you know i've got a believer and every time it's kind of like with me and jim uh james i i didn't plug him because i thought i need to plug him i i talked about him because it, it's real and so whenever this uh client of mine talks 
uh, to someone, he always says, you know, when Pete helped me this and Pete helped me that, and I, I'm a little bit gun shy or embarrassed because it's it's kind of like what I did with James, but it's true. So, um, you know, you just take but, your compliments and, and uh, be good with it. But if you got to that point, you should be so very proud <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I'm I'm very proud. I'm very I'm very happy for him, and I'm and I'm I'm proud of the work that uh, we've done together and. You know, I think that's the greatest joy for, for us, right, is, you know, we have to make a living, but if we get to do something we love and we see the results and, and it helps somebody else, that's that's what we're here for, I think, uh -huh. so. I totally uh, so agree. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. So where are you now on your journey? So you've got some existing clients and uh -huh. you're, I guess, always looking out for new clients. Yes, I'm looking for after new clients or new projects or I don't know some interesting ideas I, to involve yeah. myself in. But now, now that you've kind of, I mean, just going back, you said that this is something that you'd like to do, work from home and be your own boss and everything else. Now that you have actually experienced it for the last two years and doing something that you like, right? I guess it's not. It wasn't plain sailing either. It, it was a bump, a bit of a bumpy road. I mean, or um, how did you find it? Not that tough. Not that, not that tough. No, because um, I think that when you do something that you like, it, it's the um, all the um, problems you may have. It, uh, it, they seem easier to. So, so from from that initial post that you put out, I'm going to go back and check it. Actually, is it still <laughs> is it still there? And uh, no, it it isn't. It was two years or so. Yeah, well, I'm going to scroll back and have a look. Right. Two years. <laughs> it will take you two days to scroll. <laughs> All right, but yeah, I I'll just be curious on because you you did something. I mean, you went you you weren't selling anything. You were just explaining. A situation and that I think that's what resonated with people we had another guest on here and she created a, yeah a 40 second video or something no, I can't even remember how long it was now mm -hmm. yeah I need to go back and check that but I mean she created a, a very very personal video you remember Ida that, that did a, the video yeah right yeah. so it's very short video it's very rough and ready it wasn't this kind of professional stuff and yeah, it was so personal. I and mean, she was just telling her story. She'd lost her job looking for something else. And uh -huh. then from that, she within two days, she had like 7,000 views and two job offers. So, I mean, not that the she other was day saying... I saw, uh, I saw a post related to that. It was a guy with uh, a piece of paper saying, I, need, I desperately need a job. And uh, the same in two weeks or so, he had a job. So, yeah. So, I mean, you can be seen as, oh, yeah, the, that poor sad person, and people feel sorry for you, or you could think, oh, no, I don't want to work with them. They, they, they look desperate. So, it is a kind of a risk and a fine balance between seen as being desperate, give me a job, but not showing any value. I mean, mm -hmm. as opposed to like saying, this is what you're doing and showing, right, the sincerity of that. And, and and the value that you could bring and then people want to engage and think well wow they're professional and connect with you like when you mentioned about your post and the marketing agency wouldn't just select you if based on if you're just saying like i need a job or something no but um, besides that uh, of course i had to send them some works i done or so mm -hmm. they haven't chose me right away no but because besides that i think it's very important to um, because um, when talking to people they understand the person you are um, i think that um, we are very related in the sense that uh, the person and the professional, they are they need to stick um, very closely. No, mm -hmm, you don't. Mm -hmm. You can't have an image about uh, how professional you are and um, in the personal life be completely different. I don't know if you agree or not, but yeah, 
no i agree so i mean we can talk a lot about that so where you are now you, you're happy that you you made that kind of transition from the corporate world to working with multi-internationals and stuff to doing your own thing working from home and and you're enjoying it you said that you're doing something that you enjoy and that you love so so, I do, I do, because it was my dream since I can remember. Okay. So. so so how can we, I mean, like the community here, I mean, how can we help you? Or what are your biggest challenges that you face at the moment? Well, I think what I would need would be some other, I don't know if companies or um persons or whatever to to reach out to me for new clients i can help you <laughs> okay <laughs> well the thing is uh, i saw i got a phone call uh what i do one of my activities i mentioned about websites but uh, past two years uh, i help some companies to improve their search engine optimization but what I do is not uh, like copywriting. Of course, we discuss the keywords, etc. Uh, but uh, what we do, we do first the technical part. So what I can do, I can help you with your website because it's uh, nice, but it's slow loading, for example. Uh, and uh, this is the first thing. Second, uh, most of my clients uh, with websites uh, for the time being are from Bulgaria and they are pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. Pharmaceutical companies, they're really very regulated. So when you post an article or whatever, it goes to definitely to the legal department, mm -hmm. marketing, legal department, agency, etc. Uh, so I have some challenge now with the Bulgarian company. Uh, they need to put the keywords in the content of the website, but they cannot simply just change it or publish. Yes, yes, it needs I see. To go a long way. So the, for this, uh, so uh, this is, I think that I, I might, I don't have thousands of clients so I can pass <laughs> to <laughs> most of them uh, well uh, here in Southeast Europe mm -hmm. uh, few are like English ones I see your website is only in Spanish yes so you, you I know uh, um, what website have you looked for Informatico yes this is yes that's not my job. <laughs> That's my okay. husband's job, and I'm struggling with so him since your, last your, year. Your, your husband. Telling him you you need to update this. You need to make this website, <laughs> and and he's not. So yeah, this is uh, something because also with James we had many talks about websites, etc. When you uh, build your business mm -hmm. uh, slowly, here it's a. Uh, it's a competency you start building your brand yes i need to make my own website so so this is one uh, and, and when you do it on your own website mm -hmm. okay it's good to use the social networks and other to promote this but it's good to put value into something that you have control and hands on this to Yes, I know so what you mean. Th th this is uh, my opinion that mm -hmm. uh, and the sooner you start with a website, for example, just registering a domain, time is working for you. The for older your, the domain yes, yes. is also... I have a domain which is called content for inbound. <laughs> Very good. This is what you want. This to do was this step one number one. Message. Now I have to go for step number two. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah I, I think yeah, boy, and I mean you could take that conversation. We should I send you a request to connect so we can catch up. Uh, yeah. For, okay. For a call. Perfect. Maybe you can also help me so we can exchange something or find so, common projects to yeah. So in your business, do you need any branding? Need any help on the branding side? 
Uh, are you talking to me? Ah, uh, yes. Because <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to introduce Pete. You see. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I have some ideas and I'm looking for some templates or so. And since I do the content, uh, I have some ideas of what it should contain as well. But uh, I haven't done the puzzle yet, no? Yeah. Um, I'll just share something that, that's happened recently that um, I'm pretty excited about. And, and it's one of those, maybe like this post that you did that just all of a sudden started getting a lot of traction. I mentioned that about this client of mine that I you know helped and how he's, every time he opens his mouth, he talks about how good it went. Well, um, I had the opportunity to share a little bit about that with another group I'm part of called uh, 10X Vets. I'm a former Navy officer in the US, in the US Navy. Uh, and so this is a bunch of veterans who, uh, or their spouses who have um, their own businesses. And so I was sharing a little bit about the story about my client, how, how I helped him with his brand strategy. And the guy that created this platform said, this is something you should be telling everybody about in this organization. I think a lot of them can use it. And by the way, I, I could use it also. Um, so I said, okay, well, you know, let me, let me show you, share with you what I'm doing. He goes, well, that's all great, but I really needed to be self-paced. I don't have the uh, time to meet with you once a week for three months. Can you just make this self-paced? And I said, well, actually I can because uh, about two years ago, James had a couple of interns and he and those interns, I put them through this course and I recorded everything. And so um, now I have this self-paced course, which consists of watching the videos, reviewing the presentations, uh, giving you assignments, giving you examples of what the assignments should look like. And at the end of it, you get um, your brand story is written, your brand architecture is written, your brand positioning is and you're keyed up uh, to hand over that, what I would call one of the very best briefs, uh, brand strategy briefs to give to a marketing uh, graphic designer to create mm -hmm. your brand, um, your brand uh, visual identity. And so since that time that I told him, I've had like five or six people in the last month who have signed up either for the brand uh, self-paced course or the uh, coaching course. So mm -hmm. I don't, if um, you know that is something that would be interesting to you, but um, it might be for you personally, because a lot of us who've worked in this space, we know in our hearts and we know in our minds, but we don't actually spend time to write things down and actually. Yes, I think I think there is um, a thing that uh, when you have to write or tell somebody else's story. Uh, it's easier than when you have to make your own one. A hundred percent. I agree. And literally, I just, a, a, a gentleman who heard heard about this literally came to me and he said, I need your help. Uh, I actually want to apply for a job, a very important job. And I know I need to get my brand story right. And I'm literally, it's or I'm, I'm looking at you on my iPhone and I'm looking at my monitor and he just sent me his story last night and he's asking me to read it and, and, and uh, it's, it's fabulous. So, um, so all that is to say is that I think, you know, it's, is it perfect? No, but it's, it's pretty close. And um, it's one of these where I think it can be beneficial. Um, and so for what it's worth, I share that with you um, and uh, you know, absolutely no pressure or no, um, no anything other than just, uh, you know, from, from uh, colleague to colleague, I you know I'd love to share with you what I've done and see if it makes sense. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Excellent. So what I've done is that I've shared Connie's LinkedIn link in the chat. So I encourage you to connect with each other. I've added also Connie to the featured business group on LinkedIn. So you'll see new guests and be able to chat and whatever in there as well. So Paul, Paul, did you have something to add? Um, no. No. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. Can't get Connie out to South Africa to do some work with some of your clients. Um, I'm no. thinking, but um, you know what's what's happening at the moment is I'm 
I'm in a sales process to sell a solar intervention uh, to a hotel group. So starting with one hotel and then moving it into the group. And, and um, I always look at it, a trade opportunity. I'm, I'm very well connected with the rest of the world. This little meeting is one of my little meetings that I have around friends and friends around the world. So I want to help this hotel mm -hmm. um, market themselves. I mean, we've all now been through COVID. They're sitting with, I think, 122 rooms, you know, 50% capacity at the moment. So um, uh, funny enough, I've just sent Boyan uh, the website. Um, you know, can we improve it? And what stories do we tell? I don't, uh, that's a possibility. So, you know, that's something that I could integrate into my deal with them. So, but, you know, you mentioned travel. So I'm just not sure, would it be a, is a hotel a potential client? Yes. It, it can be. Actually, I'm talking with a marketing agency that next week we have to make a proposal for a hotel that uh, needs some more visibility. So it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, and would, you, would, you be, would you be reaching out to, to the Spanish market or do you reach out to Europeans? What, where's your, what's your, your reach? Uh, both. Um, as I mentioned before, um, some people here in Spain use uh, Spanish and English for their clients. So um, it depends uh, if the business is for Spain or worldwide, because if, if it is for Spain, it has to be in Spanish. But if it's worldwide, it has to be in English. So, yeah, yeah. So, so you write in English and Spanish and yes. Romanian. Yes. Yeah. Look, I mean, let's um, let's explore this and see if we can do something. I would like to try. Well, okay. something that uh, I didn't, let's say, share to this audience. I have experience with hospitality business. Since one of the solutions, uh, Scala, is as a back office for the hotels. Uh, so I worked with uh, many hotels for implementing this. Further, a friend of mine is in like a property business and particularly selling hotel, hotels in the States. For the time being, he wanted to expand uh, wider, but, uh, but maybe this is something that we can also explore to go into more details with this. Yeah, yeah. Because it's... Uh, yeah. It's not only software, but also <coughs> so how a small, let's say, owners of the hotels join the bigger network, let's say Hyatt or whatever, or Hilton, uh, how they sold their, um, they bumped into their business to, huh? and this could be for smaller or for big businesses to, and, uh, Maybe yeah. it's interesting area to, to discuss. Right. Okay. So I, I suggest as a first step, like connect with each other on LinkedIn and then you can chat in the chat group or, or set up your own mm -hmm. uh, personal. I'll, I'll send you an invite, Connie. Connie, I'll send okay, you an invite. Thank you. So we are we, we already connected. On. <laughs> so, so line just, up. <laughs> yeah. So, so just in kind of wrapping this up because we've kind of gone over the time so uh, is there any message that you want to leave us with about maybe your journey and mm, yes i think um, it's very important never to quit up your dreams because uh, the thing is that what i'm doing now is um, because i haven't um, abandoned mine you know? because I wanted to work in something that uh, I can live from, uh, doing it from my uh, corner and uh, I managed to do it. So if you're uh, decided enough, you can do almost anything. Perfect. I love that. So thank you very much.
Connie, for being our 76th guest. Thank right. you. Just, just a couple of things uh, to just to wrap up with. Uh, yeah, I, I ask people that if they want to be featured in our featured guest book, uh, first edition. So I know that Pete and Boyan are going to be in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul? Uh, uh. I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't hear anything from Paul. And Connie, I mean, now you've been a guest, you've got that option as well. I mean, we do have 12 confirmed so far. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, ideally, I'm I'm after thirteen ish, but I mean, if, if a couple more or whatever, then that's not a problem. Right, like, we do have our first kickoff call next week. I first have to uh, update <laughs> with all the others, <laughs> and we'll talk after that. Right. No they're, they're nice people, actually. As I told you in the beginning, Ch 